somewhat of an understanding about what's going on with this person. It does not mean anything for you. I also want you to see that all of these behaviors, which are coming through as symptoms, which they label, are an adaptation. That means that the root of all of these things is in fact trauma. Now trauma forces us to separate off from the aspect that was vulnerable to the aspect that kept us safe. And oftentimes that creates behaviors in our adult life, especially teenage life and sometimes even childhood, that are less than beneficial to ourselves and behaviors that get us in a lot of trouble with the system. So I need you to see that these issues you're having are adaptations that you experienced as a result of the trauma that you went through. I'll give you an example with borderline, shall I? Borderline, you're going to see this with any kind of um, attachment trauma. Now that's trauma relative to relationships and closeness. If you've had any kind of trauma there, abandonment is a big thing with people who are borderline. Invalidation is the biggest thing when it comes to people who are quote-unquote borderline. So let's look at this. Let's say you grew up in an invalidating environment, which you did. What happens when you have an emotion in that environment? Chances are your parent turned against it. So when you said, I feel really sad, the parent goes, there's no reason to feel sad right now. It's ridiculous. It's such a beautiful day or something like that. It's an invalidating environment to your emotions, which leaves you in a position where you feel pain, but you're being told you shouldn't feel pain, and yet you feel it anyway, and so you start to distrust yourself, and so the emotion starts to build, and you actually create no capacity for regulation of your own emotions. Because how do we learn to regulate our own emotions? If our parent regulates our emotions, and if our parent is seeing that our emotions don't exist, can they regulate our emotions? No, so we never learn to do it. So basically, in our adult life, what happens? We have no capacity to regulate our emotions. When somebody says something to us, we go from park to fifth and 50 seconds, and suddenly we're in a towering rage. And we go and look at that, and we say, oh my god, it's borderline. That's not borderline. That's just the result of having a traumatic experience in childhood where our emotions were invalidated, and so we had no hope of resolving them. And so this is how we evolve in our adulthood. So we have to start to shift our focus within the mental health field towards what happened to this person and how can we provide the missing experience for this person so that we can give them different tools for coping with these types of experiences and triggers that they're experiencing in their adult life. I really don't want you to start looking at whether you have one of these conditions or another one of these conditions because as our society progresses, we're going to get rid of them entirely. It's no longer going to be a conversation whether this person has borderline or this person has schizophrenia. A person will be treated as a whole organic unit where all the trauma that they experienced creates ways of coping with it, adaptations. Do those benefit the person? No, so we're going to give them different tools. We're going to give them different experiences. Healing is all about experiencing the opposite, right? So if you experienced being invalidated in childhood, oh weird, you can solve borderline condition by validating their emotions in real time and actually creating resolution for them. And then the whole condition is gone. So it's not a defect, it's an adaptation. See that about yourself. There is nothing wrong with you.